In the last video, I introduced the idea of the uh, sampling distribution for the mean when we're trying to estimate a population mean and we want to get a handle on the uncertainty in the process of random sampling with relation to the um, using the sample mean as an estimate of the population mean. And in this video, I'll take that idea a little bit further and talk about how to calculate and interpret a confidence interval for the mean. So if you recall, what we looked at last time was a population of human gene lengths. And we took a random sample from that population and then calculated the sample mean and then used that sample mean as an estimate of the population mean. And then we also calculated the sample standard deviation and then we used that sample standard deviation and divided it by the square root of the sample size and that gave us something called the standard error of the mean and the standard error of the mean was an estimate of the standard deviation of the sample means coming from um, repeated samples from that population. So what I'm going to talk about in this video is putting that information together into a confidence interval for the mean. And so first thing that we're going to do is take that sample mean that we had. So let's just look at that again. So that was 3324.2 and that's going to be the middle of our confidence interval. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate a margin of error and I'm going to subtract that margin of error from this number. That will give me the lower bound of the interval and then I'm also going to add it to this sample mean and that will give me the upper bound of the interval. And to get that, sum, that margin of error I'm going to take that standard error of the mean that we calculated. That was the 281.107 and I'm going to multiply it by 2. And if I multiply it by 2 that's going to give me an approximate confidence interval where the level of confidence is 95%. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to take the sample mean and then I'm going to subtract two times the standard error to give me the lower bound. So 2761.986 and then I'll do the same thing but this time I'll add two times the standard error. So that gives me 3,886.414. So that gives me my approximate 95% confidence interval for the mean. So the way to interpret this very loosely is we can say we're 95% confident that the population mean is in the interval between 2,762, if I round it to the nearest whole number, uh, up to 3,886. So numbers inside that interval are more plausible than numbers outside that interval and numbers near the middle of this interval, so numbers near the middle, remember the middle is the sample mean, so numbers near 3,324 are going to be more plausible than numbers at the edge of the interval. So we could think of the population mean as being most likely to be close to 3324.2 but it could plausibly be as low as this 2762 or perhaps as high as this 3886 and we're 95% confident in that. So what does that mean to be 95% confident? Okay, so again, I'm going to do a, uh, a learning experiment, which we would never get to do in practice, but we can in this case because we actually have the population to work with. So I'm going to go back and take a, a new sample from my population. 
uh, we'll look at the histogram again, we'll calculate the mean again, and this time we get 3575.64, calculate the sample standard deviation again, calculate the standard error again, and then calculate our 95% confidence interval again. And this time we get 3,066 3, up to 4,085. Okay, and then I'll do it again. Take the sample, there's the histogram, mean and standard deviation, standard error, and there's our interval, 2,813 up to 4,203. Okay, so you could imagine doing this many, many times. And so now we're going to have a whole series of 95% confidence intervals. Okay, in this case, we happen to know the population mean. Where is it? There. 3,511.457. Okay, so in this particular case, because we're doing a, a learning experiment, so not something we do in practice, but something we can learn from as a, as a simulation, if you like, we could ask ourselves, well, did our interval do what it was supposed to? Is our population mean inside our interval? So we can easily assess that. It's 3,511 between these two numbers. So for this interval, yes it is. Okay, what about, let's go to the previous one. Is it in this interval? Uh, it's in that one too. Okay, uh, let's go to the first one we did. Uh, is it in this one? Uh, yes, it's in that one too. Okay, so of the three samples that we took, the population mean was inside the 95% confidence interval. Okay, let's see if I can get one where that doesn't work out. I might have to do this a few times to get it because after all we're sampling randomly and let's just skip and do uh, well I do need to these intermediate calculations okay uh, what was the number we were going for again it was 3511 I think yeah uh, so it's yeah it's in that interval Okay, how many times do I have to do this before I get one where it's not going to be inside? I'm going to select a whole bunch of lines here and run them all at once so that I don't have to keep uh, mousing around too much. Okay, uh, 3511 is in that interval, and that one, and that one, and that one. And that, so you can see that it's in, well, so far, all of the intervals. I'm going to get one one of these days where it's not inside, though. Oh, that one's close. Okay, finally got one where our population mean is not in our interval. Okay, for this particular sample, so this is a, a picture of it here in the histogram, I got a 95% confidence interval going from 2684.64 up to 3502.32. In this case, our interval turned out to be a dud in the sense that our population mean was not inside it. Okay, so on average, what percentage of the time do you think the population parameter is inside the 95% confidence interval? Well, if you guessed a 95%, you'd be correct. Okay, so uh, for example, if I was to sample 
a hundred times from this population and calculate a hundred 95% confidence intervals, the population mean on average would be inside the interval 95 in 95 of those 100 intervals and it would be outside in five of them on average. So that's the technical meaning of a 95% confidence interval. So uh, it doesn't mean that there's a 95% probability that the population parameter is in this interval okay because the population parameter is either in this interval or it's not in this case it's not so we can't really talk about the interval as representing 95 percent probability that it's inside this interval all we can do is say we're 95% confident that the population mean is in the interval. Okay, so you have to be a little bit careful with the language here. And you don't really want to use the word probability here because that's technically not quite correct. Uh, as long as you just stick with the word confident, then that's going to be okay. So just say we're 95% confident that the population mean is in our interval. Okay, and in terms of what does it actually mean, it means if we were to repeat this sampling a bunch of times, in 95% of our intervals, the population mean would be inside the interval. So the interval that we get for our one and only sample in reality is the population mean inside that interval? Well there's no way of knowing but we're 95% confident it is because this sampling process that we've undertaken has the, the result that in 95% of such intervals it, the population parameter would be inside the interval. So, so that's, that's how to interpret a 95% a confidence interval. When I talked about calculating the 95% confidence interval, uh, I said this was an approximate interval. And that's because these numbers here, the two, is, is actually an approximation. And in practice, we use a slightly different number here that's a little more accurate and to get that exact confidence interval we can use this code here okay and so this this interval here is a little more precise than this one here um, but it's it's this is a good approximation that you can do by hand um, but if you want the more accurate confidence interval, it's here. And we'll revisit this more accurate interval uh, in a later lesson. But for now, just as we're introducing the idea of a confidence interval, this approximation is, is, uh, is sufficient. Okay, so that's um, the last, this video and the previous one are thinking about um, statistical inference from the perspective of estimating a population parameter and putting a, a confidence interval around our estimate. In the next video, we're going to come at this from a slightly different angle and think about testing whether a specific value of the population parameter is plausible or whether uh, some other value is, is, is more plausible. And so we're going to talk about hypothesis testing.